Hi everyone, I'm back and today we'll be taking a look at prioritization of task during landing and thereafter the after landing flows. I'm Utkarsh, welcome to flight level 070. A lot of us believe that landing is one of the most challenging part of a pilot's daily routine. But let me tell you, if you go and ask them, they'll probably share a lot of stories other than the last landing that they did. So let us review the workload management during landing and thereafter take a look at the after landing flows. I'll be using the FCOM and the FCTM for reference. Welcome to the simulator. So let's execute this approach and landing and discuss our priorities while executing a landing. It is uh, important to achieve the correct pitch and airspeed before executing your flare maneuver and for that the key is a stable approach. We need to ensure that we cross the threshold at the correct height, land within the touchdown zone and maintain our centerline alignment. Let's discuss something on the crosswind landing technique as well for which if required we can maintain a maximum crab angle of 5 degrees and if required land with a small bank into the wind so your upwind wheel will land first. Also, if reverse is being used, especially on contaminated runways with strong crosswinds, it can be challenging to maintain directional control. So for that, you can get the reverse to idle, use differential braking to stabilize your directional control. Thereafter, if required, reapply your uh, reversers. Full pedal deflection gives you a deceleration rate of 10 knots per second. So let's execute this landing and thereafter follow our after landing flows. Look at the far end and touch down. Deploy reversers, put the nose gear down, do not keep it in the air. About 100 knots, store your reversers away and manual braking. We'll vacate the runway and thereafter do our after landing flows. Okay, once the runway is vacated, we can carry out our after landing flows. So I'll stop the aircraft, set the park brake and thereafter we'll do the after landing flows. Once we've received the taxi clearance, the pilot flying can disarm the ground spoiler. So disarm the ground spoiler. This is an indication for the pilot monitoring to carry out his flows. Also after vacating the runways, the pilot flying needs to set the lights. So that can be delegated to the pilot monitoring. So they can put whatever lights are not required to off. So we'll put the land lights off and when we turn off off as it's daytime, we'll just maintain the taxi lights for ground crew. Then we'll begin the flow. So First thing, radar goes off, predictive wind shear system goes off, engine mode selector to normal, so if it was at ignition, we can put it back to normal. Then flaps can be retracted to zero. Uh, in case of icing conditions, we do not retract the flaps until ground crew has inspected for any ice secretion on the surface of the flaps. TCAS to standby. ATC can be set as required, so as of now I am leaving it to auto and uh, APU as required. We will assume we will start the APU, so you start the APU. And then anti-ice as required, so right now we do not have icing conditions, but if required we can put the anti-ice on. Only thing to consider here would be your ground idle would become higher, hence you need to ensure that you maintain optimum taxi speeds or increase your brake usage. Then you look at the brake temperature. So I will disregard the APU page and go to the wheel page. And now we look at the temperatures that are really high. This is because I do not have a proper control for the brake. So either it is full braking or no braking, hence the brake temperatures in the sim go so high. 
So you check the brake temperature and you check that the difference between the wheels is not more than 150 degrees and either of them should not be more than 600 degrees or should not be at or below 60 degrees. If that's the case, maintenance is required. Then the average temperature of the right one with the left one should not be greater than 200. Or if any of these brake exceeds a temperature of 900, definitely maintenance action is required. Then we use the brake fans. So right now we'll put the brake fans on. This is because we expect the temperature to go above 500 degrees Celsius. They should be delayed until five minutes after landing or before turning into the bay. Thereafter, we'll carry out our after landing checklist. So flaps are retracted, spoilers are disarmed, APU is started, radar, so we check radar is off, predictive windshield system is off and no smoking signs can be recycled. So recycle the no smoking sign. I really appreciate all of you for your extended support for my channel and please subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'll see you next time. Take care.